For USEFootball.com, I'm Jack Smith, joined alongside Chris Trevino for instant analysis from USC's Wednesday night practice. Chris, let's start with the weather, because you didn't get to do that yesterday. It is cold today. I'm back. We're, we we're wearing both some pullovers, some nice fleeces, and it was pretty chilly when I got here on campus. Obviously, it's nighttime. The, the temperatures drop, so I'm predicting we're going to see a lot more players coming out to practice with those, you know, long pants, no more shorts. That'll be gone in November, but you know, it was an interesting practice just from the standpoint of Lick and Riley keeping everyone on their toes. Today, the team did not go out to Brian, Brian Kennedy Field. Instead, they went to the left and they came on to Cromwell Field, where actually where we're filming right now in Loker Stadium. But practice started out on Cromwell Field, Loker Stadium, and then they split up. Defense was on one field, offense was on the other, and they rejoined each other on Brian Kennedy once again. So Lincoln switched things up. They have practices on two different fields. So, you know, get into November, you know, trying to keep the guys a little bit out of the routine. We'll probably figure out what that was about on Thursday when Lincoln does his, uh, his morning press conference. But, yeah. Just a little bit of a twist for uh, Wednesday practice, Jack. Well, and another twist on the, along that same note. This is, I feel like, the first time we've heard piped-in crowd noise for a home week. We, USC is going to be playing at home this week, and normally they've been piping in the sound ever since the Oregon State game when they plan to go on the road. This time we heard it for the first time at home. So uh, that was really interesting. Lincoln even mentioned yesterday, you know, they're practicing in pads when a lot of teams wouldn't normally be practicing in pads. So I think he's just trying to toughen up the USC squad, do some things that other schools might not as we come into the home stretch. The Trojans ninth ranked in the CFP rankings, so they got to make a jump at some point. They got to win out if they want to have a chance at the college football playoff and the Pac-12 title game. But let's get into some things that we talked about today. Of course, Wednesday means it's Alex Grinch Day. He's normally baked in with a lot of quotes. What did you have to overall say about what Alex Grinch said? You know, Grinch did not speak, as you said, uh, on Saturday. And this was the second consecutive game where USC has been torched with a lot of yards, a lot of points, a lot of big plays given up. So, you know, the defense is a little bit of soul searching into itself right now, just trying to figure out answers. And one of the things that Lincoln Riley mentioned was they were really close, not close enough on some things. And uh, Grinch was asked about that and he had the quote, it was close, was it closest or close? I'm not sure which one, but it was close is a cancer. And when your defense, you know, you're just that far away from making the play. And that is the difference from maybe a sack or a tackle for a loss or a stuff at the line of scrimmage to a 50 yard bomb down the field. So that little closeness and it can keep building up with the defense like, okay, we were close this time, but we'll get them next time. We'll get them next time, Jack. But if you keep stacking on that, then maybe you'll never get to them. And maybe you never find that little inch to get forth and, and, and fi finish the play and finish the series and stuff like that. So that was kind of the message of that closeness could be a cancer and just trying to find a way to close that gap whether it's, you know, look at the film like, hey, your get off could have been better here or, you know, covering off the ball could have been better here or just the little things. And I feel like it always goes back to the little things. And that's what, you know, a coaching, coaching cliche is we got to fix up the little things. It's all about little things. It's small tweaks we got to make. And in the end, I guess that's kind of what Dreams was saying is if we make those small adjustments, we can close that gap between close and making the play. Yeah, I think kind of what he was saying was a mindset thing where, yes, USC was close on some plays, but just because you're close doesn't mean you're going to make the play next time. And I think he's trying to instill in the players and definitely told us that just because USC was close does not mean that there's still not things that they can improve on to make it even closer or possibly finally like, you know, making that big play. He mentioned the one-handed catch. He says you can look at the one-handed catch, say, there's nothing you can do to defend that, but maybe you can't defend the one-handed catch, but you can try and get after the quarterback before that. You can look back at the film and see the get off off the ball or the coverage or making the quarterback move around in the pocket. So there's a lot of things that he said that maybe at the end of the play, what the, the final play on the play chart says, which is the one-handed touchdown catch, maybe that's what you see and you say, can't do much to defend that. But there's a lot more that goes into every play. And so USC is focused on not just being close, they want to fix everything and make the plays. And that closeness hurts even more when you're facing a scrambling quarterback, which USC obviously did with Jaden Delora, one of the best in the nation. And this is a continuing string of dual threat quarterbacks that USC has faced over the last several weeks. Good news is Cal this week, Jack Plummer, is not known to be a scrambling quarterback. But Grinch did mention, you know, with a scrambling quarterback, you're not always going to be 100 percent. You're not always going to make that play because they can create something out of nothing and they can make you play pay as a defense when you're doing everything right. So we said it's never going to be 100 percent when you're facing a scrambling quarterback, but you just can't let them be 100 percent. You can't let them be successful on 100 percent of their plays when a break, play breaks a play breaks down and they do the thing with their legs. So that was kind of the message when it comes to scramblers and, you know, covering those guys up. 
but luckily Jack Plummer not known as a scrambler so you know USC fans and USC's defense will have a little bit easier time you know attacking the quarterback and getting into the backfield but it's definitely something that they need to fix because there are some dual threats left on the schedule notably DTR and that UCLA UCLA matchup that's coming up and possibly Bo Nix you know coming down into the Pac-12 championship whatever happens so they need to figure out something when it comes to scramblers. Now Jack Plummer and I have two things in common. One is our first name, and the other is our inability to run very fast and make people miss. Uh, but yeah, USC has struggled with uh, scrambling quarterbacks, and we've seen it a lot for opposing defenses. It's hard to stop Caleb Williams. When you watch Caleb Williams dodging around in the pocket, it's a, a good play when the defense actually gets him down. You don't expect them to do it every time. It kind of, I think, what Lincoln Riley said yesterday and what Alex Grinch said today, it's just enforcing the idea that it's not the norm to get a scrambling quarterback down in the pocket. It's a good play when you do. It's the norm when they get away. You just need to make sure you're at least getting a couple of those plays, doing it every once in a while to limit their ability because, like we've seen with USC sometimes, one big sack setting Caleb Williams behind the sticks. Like If you make him punt just once, that can be a big move for the defense. One player who did have probably the biggest play for the defense against Arizona was Bryson Shaw. This is the first time we've spoken with Alex Grinch about Bryson Shaw pretty much all year. Uh, what did you think of what he had to say about the, about the safety? And for those that don't know, Bryson Shaw was actually recruited by Alex Grinch when he was at Ohio State, where Bryson Shaw ended up, you know, was a starter for that Rose Bowl team. And Grinch talked about how, you know, he saw all the things in his high school tape that he thought could make him a high level uh, college football player. And we're seeing that kind of come come to fruition with kind of the plays that he has made. And, you know, he was a starter, as I mentioned, on that Ohio State team and mentioned his background as a top football prospect and a national lacrosse prospect. It's fitting that we have USC's lacrosse club team practicing right over here. So I wonder if Bryson will come out throw the sticks on and you know throw around for old time's sake but you know a very dynamic athlete and a guy who played very well was the Pac-12 defensive player of the week but Bryson when we talked to him he said you know I don't think I played that great of a game you know he mentioned you know he didn't mention the good plays that he made he mentioned the bad plays that he made and that is three missed tackles and you know that's something you want out of one of your veterans to be like hey I know how to pick I know how to tackle for loss whatever but I'm still thinking about those those tackles that I missed and how they affected the team and how they kept a drive going or how they could have you know stopped a drive from going further. So those are the kind of things you want from your older players and your veteran players is and all your players in general. It's just don't harp on the good things; those are nice, but harp on the bad things and try to fix those things. So the next game you'll be better and better and better, and it'll be a cascading effect. I think the funnier thing, which kind of seems just the same as Lincoln Riley in the college football playoff rankings, Alex Grinch doesn't really care about Pac-12 Player of the Week. He said he had no idea that his own safety, Bryson Shaw, was Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Week. One thing he did mention, though, was how hard he worked coming back from rehab, getting back from injury to find his way onto the field and worked to having what he thought was a good game. He said he doesn't even think this is the best game Bryson Shaw will play for the Trojans or can play. So I thought that was a really big note about the safety that we hadn't you know, really expected much from uh, up until this past week. Right, and you know he had that torn quad as a big blow for this defense, and he was expected to play a big role. And we're kind of seeing that role, and we saw that role in Arizona. And by far, this is not the best game we we can see out of Bryson Shaw because you know he still had a lot of rust on him. You know, this was his first kind of real game back, and we've seen him a lot in practice. We've seen him working in with the twos and and threes, and sometimes with the first team. But this is the first like kind of game action fans have really gotten to see him in. I know he played in some earlier packages uh, in that Oregon State game. That was kind of the first taste that we saw him and kind of saw him go out there with those special packages but you know I have a feeling we're going to see a lot more of number 27 as things go on shout out to Maryland where we're both from had to do it but you know I think this is just the start of what Bryson Shaw can do for USC's defense this season and it's going to be a critical stretch for him and a critical stretch for, to get as much plays out of him you know as we go into November. Yeah, one thing Bryson Shaw said to me that also leads us into our final topic, which was Caleb Williams' post-practice interview, was that he thinks USC has the best wide receiver room in the country. I asked him specifically about the depth pieces and how working against the USC wide receivers prepared him for the Arizona wide receiver group. He confidently quickly said, no, no, we've got the best wide receiver group in the nation. Like, have you seen how deep they are? And he talks so fast and so erratically. It's like, I don't even think you guys know just like just how deep they are or whether you were expecting that. And it's kind of like, yeah, that's kind of what a lot of us thought after the Arizona game was the wide receiver group and the offensive line group really rallied up. Uh, they had a lot of guys come up the depth chart and make starts when they weren't expected to with Mario Williams and Andrew Voorhees being out and Jordan Addison also being out. So what did you think about what Bryson and Caleb and kind of just the entirety of the week had to say about the depth from this USC offense? One of the big storylines because USC fans have been you know, harping on this for the last several seasons pre-Lincoln is like, let's see some of those young guys in there. Let's see some Kyle Ford. Let's see some Jonah Monheim playing inside. Let's see all of these things. Let's see Mason Murphy and to finally see it 
come to fruition and not exactly in like in a blowout situation. No, these were critical reps. This was a tight game. This is a game that USC needed to win on the road in a tough environment on homecoming. And, you know, it goes back to the coaching, just getting these guys ready to play. But there's also talent, too. You know, Mike Jack also said, you know, when I asked him about guys stepping up in that wide receiver room, it's like, we're all talented. We've all trained for this. We've all taken those reps in practice. This isn't new to us. You know, it's not like some guy off the street being thrown in. These guys are college athletes. They were recruited to play at a high level, and they're ready to play a high level. And a lot of that goes out to them, you know, being prepared, and also the coaches for getting them prepared. So I think it just speaks to a lot of things within this program and within this team of guys being ready, not even blinking. You know, Mike Jack had that great quote at the Utah when he scored that touchdown. He's like, I, need, I did not even have time to think about that my number was being called and that's what you want you know you don't want a guy to go in there and think about it you just want him to react and do that and that's where you get in practice so that kind of goes back to what everyone was saying about you know we see this all the time in practice and to see it go out on a Saturday in a game in a tight spot you know that that's huge yeah Caleb Williams also just mentioned he's prepared for he's prepared all these wide receivers for the ability to come in obviously they're repping throws and routes all the time in practice and he said he didn't expect Mario Williams to be out but he texted all the depth wide receivers this week this past week saying we're going to need you at some point in the season you guys are going to need to step up so be ready when your number is called he said he didn't expect it to be this week against Arizona without Mario Williams but he's he's glad he texted them because they really showed up and they were ready he referenced Tosh Washington Kyle Ford Michael Jackson there's so many different wide receivers that stood up one thing that really stood out to me is he was asked about Taj Washington in general because he does everything for the Trojans with so many people, including Lincoln Riley, have raved about this year. And he said that at an early morning quarterback meeting at some point in a hotel room this season, they had to go get Taj to quiet down because he was playing the piano in the hotel right outside of the quarterback meeting. So obviously there's a lot of different talent around the wide receiver room and people that when they got their number called have really responded for the Trojans. So he was a freshman All-American. He has his own cooking show. And he can play the piano. And he had 100 yards and two touchdowns. And he had 100 yards and two touchdowns. Taj Washington, renaissance man. Uh, get get him a book deal. Get him a TV show. Get him something because that man has talent all over the field. But, yeah, I think it, But I think what's exciting about it, Jack, is just seeing not just with the right receivers but with the offensive line as well. It's just seeing that confidence grow, and then you'll see – better play you'll see more consistency like what does Mike Jack really have to offer this team we don't really know the full scope you know he had that touchdown he had that really nice end around play you know he gave shout out to Caleb Williams for that block that he threw him down the field but we're only scratching the surface of what these guys can do Taj Washington scored his first two touchdowns of the season Kyle Ford everyone's been wanting Kyle, more Kyle Ford you know he could have a couple more hundred yard games uh, this season he's big he's fast he's physical he can do all these things so I think is what's cool is just seeing these guys finally get the opportunity playing well with that opportunity now USC's receiving core and their offensive line with Mason Murphy and Jonah Mahan playing inside the depth is so much better and it's just proven depth it's not even like well we know these guys you know they can make plays but now we know they can make plays especially on you know in a game in a tight game in a, in a, in a situation that they needed so Man, just talk about debt building and, you know, the talent in that in that room is just rising and they got guys that can just step in and start and, you know, Caleb Williams must be a really happy guy. They still need to work on some deep throws because Jordan Addison and Mario Williams are the guys for him when it comes to deep shots, but they need to get that chemistry a little bit better, but we'll see that grow as we go through the season and hopefully those guys continue to get some more reps. I think Lincoln Riley might have a tougher time when Jordan Addison and Mario Williams are back because he's going to want to get all these wide receivers out on the field because they've done such a great job responding when their number has been called. He's going to have to try and find a way to get Terrell Bynum and Kyron Hudson and all the guys we've already mentioned today out on the field at some point while also having two of the best receivers in the country. I think it's a good problem to have if you're USC. Were there any other thoughts that you had from today's practice? No, I mean, it was a pretty short practice. Just from now on, we're only going to be able to watch the first seven minutes of the team stretch, and that's it. And then we get kicked out. That is a new norm from Wednesday. So don't really expect any sort of uh, insights from watching guys stretch for the first team period. There's not much going on there, but that is the new norm for us on Wednesdays. Only seven minutes, and then we're out. When you're just going to say Caleb Williams had a deeper than normal lunge today. Yeah. Maybe he's extra prepared for Cal. Uh, with that being said, and there's no other notes from you, I want to hear your pick because you're not going to be on Tunnel Vision tomorrow night. What do you think? I don't. I think the spread opened up at 21 points yeah. for USC. Do you think they cover, or does Cal come into the Coliseum and cover? It's a 21 points. I was talking with this with RJ Abadia before walking over. 21 points is a big spread, but it's really tempting, Jack, just because I know Cal's defense, you know, known for their defense under Justin Wilcox, but the defense isn't as strong as it's been in years past, and that offense, not very good. Not, not very good at all, and, you know, they did put 49 points up on Arizona, but Arizona's defense, we can... 
We, that's the whole thing. We know about it. So, Cal's offense, not very good. Defense, not that great. They're playing at home. And they're coming here. And, you know, USC remembers that Cal game. You know, they beat them last year. It was a weird game. And, you know, Lincoln Riley had just been hired. It was a delayed COVID game. It was just really weird. They only had, like, 40 guys travel. Such a weird game. And I think a lot of those guys remember that feeling. So, I'm, I know USC is going to win. Is it? It's a matter of covering. And right now I'm talking myself into picking the cover just because – I don't think they're going to be able to score points. I don't think they're going to be able to stop them for that long. And I think they'll have that extra emotion of it being a homecoming game and kind of remembering, you know, Cal getting the better of them in what was just a game no one wanted to play. So I would pick USC to cover those 21 points, even though it's a really big number. But I keep getting burned by USC in the cover, so whatever. But I'm still doing it. One more bold prediction I know you care so deeply for is USC and throwback uniforms against Cal. <laughs> <laughs> You're setting me up here. I don't. I know a lot of people are excited about it. Let's just say yes. Let's just say they'll do something. I, d- I don't know what that is, whether that's like a helmet or, you know, the whole shebang. I don't know. But I'll just say yes. Just to, just, just to keep, just to pour more gasoline on the fire. That, that's what I'll do. I'll just say yes. They will do something with the homecoming helmet, uh, jersey, whatever. They'll do something throwbacky. Well, you heard it here first. USC's covering 21 points and wearing throwback uniforms against Cal, uh, courtesy of Chris Trevino right here. That's all we've got for you guys today. Make sure you're getting out to the Coliseum, 7.30 p.m. game against Cal this Saturday night. Well, probably the last Saturday night night game of the season for the Trojans. They play against Colorado on a Friday, then at UCLA in the Rose Bowl. So maybe the last night game that we have, last night of uh, deep sleep that we're not going to get uh, because of a 7.30 kickoff. But uh, I think that's all we've got for you guys today. Make sure you guys are checking out USC football.com for all the articles and references from today's practice make sure you're subscribing here on youtube to watch all the interviews that we did for chris Savino, i'm jack smith check out uscfootball.com for more